From Boudin to the best burgers Acadiana has to offer, it's the Lafayette Food Junkie Show on News Talk 96.5 KPEL. Welcome back to the Lafayette Food Junkie Show on News Talk 96.5 KPEL. I'm your host, Tiffany Deku. Here we talk about all the food happenings around Acadiana. If you like food, tune in. You might learn something new. Welcome back, ladies and gents. Uh, joining tonight as guest co-host is the fabulous Amani Guillory Fruge, better known as the Cajun Mama. She came today so glamorously dressed, and she had rosé. So totally, she, she's ready for this episode. I am ready. You guys call in. I'm feeling great tonight. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to be talking to her throughout the show uh, on different topics. I want to give a shout out real quick to the Lost Bayou Ramblers who won a Grammy today amazing i love that band some louisiana love absolutely in the grammys okay so if you have not eaten at pepin's cuban sandwich you are missing out Uh, if you're not familiar with it it's a little gas station that's at the corner of ridge and west broussard have you ever been to pepin's i have not oh my god okay so they have the best cuban sandwiches in town like, I, you'll eat those, and it brings me back to the Cuban sandwiches Ugh. that I had in Miami. They're delicious. I went and picked it up, and you could smell the butter. Oh, my from God. the play lunch, <laughs> like, in the car, Perfect. like, going to my house. Mm-hmm. But what makes them especially great is you can get yuca fries mm-hmm. to go with it, and they're so Not a lot good. of places in Lafayette yes, do that. they do yuca fries. Awesome. I will say they were a little stingy on the mojo sauce mm-hmm. that came with it. It's like this garlicky olive oil stuff that you dip the yuca fries in. They were a little stingy. So we need extra it. sauce. So you do need to get extra sauce, <laughs> but delicious as always they've started doing i don't know if they do this every day or if it's only on saturdays that they do the cuban plate lunches Mm -hmm. too so you can get a lasagna that's made out of plantains oh (gasps) yeah oh my goodness and then they have different little cuban dishes there that you can get plate lunch style so that's something that they do they also have a little bit of a market inside and i found cuban crackers there yesterday that I haven't had since I was in Miami. I saw you post yeah. them. So yes. whenever I, I went to Miami, my senior trip of high school, and the girl that I went with, her mom um, is from Cuba. Like her parents are from Cuba. So she's like half Cuban. And we went and stayed with her grandmother um, who like they they escaped from Cuba. I think when they came, actually, Fidel Castro was letting people leave. Oh, wow. And so they were, you know, on a boat and they came over and they they settled in, in Miami. I don't know if they were in Miami at the time. I'm sure they were in Miami, but they ended up in New Orleans because that's where she, you know, came to Lafayette or whatever. Mm-hmm. But so we stayed with her grandmother in Miami and I fell in love with Cuban food. Like she took us to all these great restaurants and my friend kept whispering to me she's like my grandmother's cooking is so much better (laughs) she did not cook for us that entire time but it was a super fun trip and they had these cuban crackers and it's it's like a saltine without any salt and it's kind of puffed up a little bit Mm -hmm. well the ones that were at pepin's were like huge they're like the size of my palm so what do you eat with it so butter like so that's how you would eat it is with with butter on Mm -hmm. it they're delicious with butter and the guy at Pepin's told me, because I, I was freaking out, I was like, I haven't seen these. He told me to take condensed milk and cook it down until it's like into a, a thick syrup. Mm-hmm. And you put that on the crackers and you eat them that way. So this morning, I didn't have condensed milk, but I had my coffee. And and, and again, if you haven't had Cuban coffee, oh my God. Like Cuban. That I have had. Yeah. And that is amazing. Cuban food, Cuban coffee. Mm-hmm. Like it's just it's so good. But. I took the crackers and I had um, bacon butter, bacon apple butter mm-hmm. from uh, um, Cushon, Cushon Cannery. Cannery. Yes. yes. Okay. <laughs> Cushon Cannery. I was blanking on the name. And then I had some blueberry jam that I had from another one of the farmer's market vendors. Mm-hmm. And I had the butter. And so I would do like one with the the, the apple butter, one with the, it was so yes. good. I was like, this is delicious. But butter was still the best. Oh, like, they're fantastic. Just, they're so delicious. Like, so if you're curious, they have them at Pepin's. They may have have them at some of the other Hispanic grocery stores. I haven't explored enough to check it out, but it was it was very surprising to see them there. They have different sweetbreads and 
it's it's really tiny, like you know, because it's a gas station, and it's but, authentic. Yeah, it's yeah. L- really tiny. They have also have different little sodas, and I picked one yesterday that was an apple soda, which tasted like a carbonated apple juice. So I don't know how. Okay. I don't. I don't. I don't. I didn't know how to fill that. Pair it. that with some <laughs> champagne and a shot of vodka, and you're good to go. Okay. Okay, maybe that would have made it made it taste better. Like it was good. I just felt like, oh, this is fizzy apple juice. Right. It's, it's kind of how I felt about it. But Pepin's is delicious. They're on waiter. They're just they're so good. And you have to go to the original location because there's some other places around town that sell the Pepin's Cuban sandwiches. I feel like they leave something out of their recipe because they're not the same. So where's the original? The original one is in a gas station at the corner of Ridge Road and West Broussard. Ridge and West Broussard. And I learned yesterday exactly how close I live to it, which Uh is fantastic. (laughs) So I'm super excited. And then also, so... I talked about my obsession. Like, I went to Zorba's. I had the Greek fries. Yes. I got... They looked amazing. I got the hummus instead of the tzatziki sauce. Mm -hmm. Well, he came on the morning show on KADN this past Friday, Mm -hmm. and he brought, like, a huge elaborate spread. Like, it was like a Greek buffet. Oh, my goodness. In the studio. So he made me some of the Greek fries with the tzatziki. I will never get them with hummus again. Oh, really? The hummus was good. It was was kind of heavy, though. It was a lot. Mm -hmm perfect with that tzatziki because it's sauce. a little cooler like it has yes. that little yes and it's so refreshing just, it's like it's hot like the fries are hot the feta is like melting into the fry yes. with the with the dressing and then you dip it's oh it's so good that sounds so, amazing delicious so just want to say i was wrong get the tzatziki sauce i it's saw delicious. the photos on on facebook and i was like oh my goodness where are these french fries i need to go and get some yeah zorba amazing is amazing they're delicious so go check them out um, and then also, I want to mention that you tried out Taco Bell's new fries. <laughs> I totally and you did. About it on social media. So give us the rundown. I am on a French fry kick this week. Um, so I totally went to Taco Bell and got the nacho fries. You guys, like anyone in Cajun country will love them because they're seasoned fries. They're not the plain old little like sea salt random nastiness. No, these are seasoned with like cayenne and chili, but like really good. So they're like a zesty fry. Exactly. Like a really good zesty fry. And of course, they come with the um, melted golden goodness of that nacho that cheese nacho sauce. That nacho cheese is amazing. Uh, amazing. So the beauty about these fries, not only can you order them alone, you can order them loaded. And they come in a little tray, and you have the ground meat, tomatoes, so it's sour like cream. A nacho supreme, basically, nacho supreme fries. fries yeah. But then the best part about everything is that you can order these fries on any single thing on the menu. What? So, what I did, yes, yes. I mean, I went crazy. So, they have the um, shredded chicken quesadilla. So I ordered the um, shredded chicken quesadilla with the nacho fries, and then I ordered the nacho cheese chalupa with the nacho fries, Ooh. and then I ordered the Mexican pizza with the nacho fries. You went crazy. I so did. So what was the best out of all of those combinations? Honestly, the plain nacho fries just dipped in the <laughs> sauce. I swear, like, it was the best. I mean, all the combinations, they're fun because, like, they're absolutely delicious and they're great. But listen, I was there like at lunch in the middle of the day sober. So I just, I just, I, I enjoyed the plain thing more. But like after like a night of drinking, I probably would have liked something else better. Yeah. Like one of the combinations, they were all great. But just the plain fries, extra cheese, I mean, phenomenal. Now the loaded fries, next time I go, I'm going to do the loaded fries, extra tomatoes and extra cheese. I know it sounds weird, but... But the combination of like the cool fresh tomatoes and like that hot cheese and the fries, I think it's great. Hmm, I'm gonna have to check that out. You See, have to. I didn't know I didn't know how I felt about them having fries, mm-hmm. but then with the nacho cheese, I was like, yes, like yes. that's perfect together. I still don't know how I feel about the fries, but then I saw your nacho supreme <laughs> with the fries, and I was like. I want that right now. They are amazing. And the fries, like you would expect it just just to be like some bland kind of French fry, but they're totally seasoned to like our specifications. Like we, you know, they're spicy enough. They have enough seasoning and salt and flavor. They're perfect. I love them. Uh, My dad doesn't even eat fast food at all. And I convinced him to get some. So that's a big deal. Oh, he he loved them. Oh, yeah. All right, th- we're going to take our first break, and when we come back, we have more with Amani. So come back to us. It is the Lafayette Food Junkie Show on News Talk 96.5 KFA. She puts the wow. Mm. 
beyond into words. It's the Lafayette Food Junkie herself on News Talk 96.5 KPL. Welcome back to the Lafayette Food Junkie Show on News Talk 96.5 KPL. I'm your host, Tiffany Deku. And joining tonight as guest co-host is Amani Guillory Fruge, better known as the Cajun Mama. So let's talk a little bit about the Cajun Mama business right now. Yes, absolutely. Uh, so what exactly is it? When did it get started? <laughs> so it got started a couple years ago, totally on accident. Um, I just make these amazing pies, but they're totally not sweet at all because I'm not good at baking sweets. Um, so they're a savory Cajun pie. And I basically, um, my husband is a total carnivore. He just loves meats. That's all he does. Just meat, meat, meat. So I make a quiche for him that I just loaded down with like bacon, ground sirloin, ham, grilled chicken, all his favorite meats. And I started making it for friends and family and more of my friends and family requested it. So one day, a couple years ago, I uh, posted before Christmas and I was like, hey guys, listen, Anybody who wants one of these to give as a gift over the holidays, just message me and I'll, you know, I'll do it for you. So I'm thinking like maybe like three or four of my friends would be like, oh, I feel sorry for her. Poor girl, you know, little housewife sitting at home. I'm going to buy a pie from her. But um, it turned out that I had like 60 orders off of that first post. And then um, it's just been like an avalanche uh, since then. And I'm very grateful. Uh, Acadiana has been wonderful to me. I cannot, uh, I'm not. I mean, there's no way I can express my gratitude for my amazing customers. And it's just been super fun. And uh, Lent is coming up, which is a crazy busy season because that's whenever I do all my seafood pies. So I do um, all Louisiana, everything local, shrimp, crawfish, jumbo lump crab meat. And I basically make it into a fabulous quiche with like four different cheeses and... um, yeah, we take it from there. <laughs> yeah, so Christmas was busy. Christmas was A little crazy. down right now. And then going to kick back up again Oh, no, not Lent. down right now. Oh, Mardi Gras. God, no. Mardi Gras okay. is, yeah, Mardi Gras is insane. So I have the Cajun Carnival, which is uh, my grandmother's homemade boudin recipe. Oh. So it's basically like a boudin quiche. Then I top it off with seasoned hog cracklins. Um, it has boudin, bacon, chicken, sirloin, all that good stuff. So, yeah, this um, basically starting in um, like around football season, around August, all the way through Lent, I just don't sleep at all. (laughs) And then I'll take a nap over the summer and then just get right back to it. (laughs) So how far in advance do people need to order the pies? And then where can people order the pies? Um, They can order from CajunMamaLouisiana.com. And that's M-A-M-A. And um, about 24 hours notice because... Each pie is made to order, so I'll need about 24 hours notice, but um, during this peak season, you could probably just get it within a few hours because I just, yeah, I literally have so many. I'm constantly in the kitchen, so. And so you do big pies, but you also do little pies. Yes. So my big pies, I do the full uh, nine-inch round deep dish, but the mini pies are popular. Like a lot of the law firms downtown or a lot of like doctor's offices or places will order for their employees, and I'll just do like a big pie party and just bring like 100 mini pies and... Everybody just like goes to town and enjoys. And so. you do like a low carb one. Too. I do. And you'll do them for different. If you have different uh, re- food restrictions, yes. you'll do that as well. Absolutely, I do gluten free. Uh, my son is actually gluten free. And it's so funny. It's like, yeah, Cajun Mama of all people, her son is gluten free. But um, it's good because it's it's been able to help me expand my cooking skills, and so. Um, I do gluten-free, I do low-carb, I do vegetarian. I haven't gotten to the vegan thing yet because, like, I love Ooh, cheese. that might be hard. Yeah. Cheese. I'm like, yeah, like, I, I do, like, cheese and eggs, so I don't know how that's going to work. But vegetarian, absolutely, call me any day. But vegans, you know, y'all might need to stay at bay for a while. <laughs> <laughs> have, to, have to work on that. Yeah, we're going to work on that. The, the making of vegan cheese is actually really fascinating to me and i i just bought a cookbook called nom nom paleo and she does this cashew carrot dip Hmm. and so the cashews like what they have to do and they do this when they make the cheese is like you'll take the cashews and you pour water on them and you have to let them sit Mm -hmm. for a little bit of a little bit of time and then you drain them and then it like purees easier and so that's how they make the cheese it's just that way so it's basically just like peanut butter right, <laughs> but right. like a nut butter is what you're making but it looked really good like i that the concept of like the vegan cheese that they sell at the store kind of 
scares me because I feel like it's very yeah, it scientifically me man-made right. s- saying that that scares me, but being all about nacho cheese from Taco <laughs> Bell, I fully un- realize that that's, you know, the same thing. But um, I don't know. Something about the vegan cheese like kind of freaks me out in the store. But the nut version, unless it's like in a in a puree, like a dip form, I guess. I don't know. I've never had it. So I, I can't really either. say it. You know what else I've been wanting since we're on that topic? Nutritional yeast. Have you done anything? So nutritional yeast is often used as a cheese substitute as well mm-hmm. because it has kind of like that cheesy taste to it i have never my motto is butter booze and bacon i have like a lot of the nutritional things i think it's wonderful it's fantastic i do yoga but i eat a lot yeah so i'm with you on that (laughs) i I like to find a balance i like to do like taco bell but then also occasionally you know low carb i do want to try like some of the vegan products i would like to try cooking with it just like at home experimental just to see how it would come out because like it's like a fear of mine. Yeah. I'm just Trying like to get oh over my. the ex- over the fear. Yes, let me get over the fact that this is not actual cheese. Let me just like try yeah. to make something. But the nutritional yeast is supposed to be really good with popcorn. Like if you make oh. popcorn and you and you put it on top. I meant to go when I was at Whole Foods last to check out to see if they had it. Um, cause I kind of wanted to look into it a little more and, and get some and kind of play with it. But yeah, that might be something I will try. I don't know if you can make a once. pie out of nutrition, <laughs> but well, I can try may, it. Let's there see. There may be a way to incorporate that with, with the nut cheese that, that you make. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. That would be awesome. <laughs> All right. We're going to take another break. And when we come back, we have more with the Cajun mama. So come back to us. It's the Lafayette food junkie show on news talk 96.5 KBEL. Good. Welcome back to the Lafayette Food Junkie Show on News Talk 96.5 KPEL. I'm your host, Tiffany Deku, and joining tonight as guest co-host is Amani Guillory Fruge, better known as the Cajun Mama. So besides being a whiz in the kitchen, <laughs> you are also a lawyer. So we're going to put your lawyer hat on for our next topic okay, let's uh, do that it. happened to come up this week. Okay. News alert, spoilers. So if you're a fan of the show, this is us. And you have not watched last week's episode, <laughs> which if you didn't watch it, I don't know how social media didn't ruin it. Ruin for you it completely. Already. Right. But if you didn't watch last week's episode, you're, you didn't see what happened on social media. You may not want to be listening right mm-hmm. now because we're about to close your ears. Spoiler alert. <laughs> so I asked you if you watched This Is Us and mm-hmm. you said you did not. I do not. Okay. I've never seen one episode. So this show, I feel like is really a tool to make sure that we as a society Cry. are still human beings <laughs> because every single episode is like an emotional train wreck. Everybody cries. It's like, and I, and it's like, I think like a few episodes ago, I saw everyone in my feed being like, Oh my God. Like, it's like every week they're mm-hmm. like tear jerkers, you know? And I was like, I didn't cry that episode. I was like, what's wrong with What's me? wrong with you, <laughs> Tiffany? I was, like, I was like, what's wrong with me? But last week's episode, I did cry because I know what, what's going to happen. So if if you're familiar with the show, if you're not familiar with the show, um, it centers around three triplets. And they, I think when the show started, we're turning 35. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of like going through their life. And their mom is played by Mandy Moore, which is so crazy for me to see her as an old woman because right. they like put makeup on her and stuff. Mm-hmm. But um, the dad in the show is like this really um, just great dad, gives a lot of sound advice, but he has passed. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of like what the show is about, like them dealing with their lives, you know, the death of their father, who wasn't, had a drinking problem and and wasn't as perfect as everything appeared. But it it paints him to be like a, a really great dad. And you know that he died. You don't know exactly how he died. Up until last week's episode, I assumed that it was something alcohol related because right. they had been talking about his his drinking problem. But so at the last week's episode, it was the Super Bowl mm-hmm. and and it they flash back in time. So they flash back to present day and then it'll flash back. So when it flashes back, it's like in the 90s, too. So if you're in your 30s, in mid 30s, like I am, it, I appreciate it because it's mm-hmm. kind of like, you know, where I was anyway. Um, so it was the Super Bowl and they uh had had cooked a bunch of food and they had made this chili and a slow cooker, which the brand on the slow cooker is Crock-Pot. 
mm-hmm. just just to say. So they had to, like a slow cooker. And the slow cooker had been given to them by a neighbor who, um, when he gave it to him, said that the switch is a little funny. So set it up that way. Already bad. So at the end of the episode, dad, the dad's cleaning up the kitchen, l- left the s- slow cooker plugged in, put a dishcloth next to it, turned it off, went to bed. Well, it turned back on and a fire started. So he turned it off. And then because the switch was a little iffy, it turned back it on. It turned itself back on. And then on. it sparked and caught the nap the caught, towel on yeah, fire. Yeah, so then like a fire. So like okay. you're you basically know that now that he is dying in this fire. Right. And it, I was hysterical crying because mm-hmm. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> and really I was hysterical crying because there was an issue with the dog and the daughter doesn't like having dogs because apparently the dog died in the fire oh, as well. Wow. And I'm gonna oh. be honest, I was a little more upset. <laughs> About the, the dog and yeah. the dad, even though I am super upset about the dad. But um, so that happened. And so when that happened, I was like, why did he not unplug the slow cooker? Mm-hmm. I was like, why didn't he unplug it? They were done. Like the chili was done. Mm-hmm. You should have unplugged it because mm-hmm. that's what you do when right. a slow cooker is done. Right. But anyway, so from that episode, the brand Crock-Pot has been getting a lot of hit back absolutely from people saying that they didn't want to buy one like they're scared that this is going to happen and there's been talks of crock pot being able to sue the makers of this is us because of them showing that their brand can cause a house fire which the makers of crock pot said this they have never gotten a complaint that this has happened and that the way that the the crock pot is made it's made it nearly impossible for this to happen. So with your lawyer hat on <laughs> <laughs> and we did make this food related, uh, could crock pot sue the makers of this is us? Absolutely. And they should, and they should uh, hire me on their team as well. <clears throat> <laughs> anyway. So yes, they absolutely could say so we have um, a lot of people get defamation and slander. They're kind of two in the same. Um, one is whenever you have absolutely no proof of something and you're just kind of saying it, it could be a lie or not. The other one actually has factual basis. And what the show did was portray Crock-Pot having this faulty machine and having something that could actually burn down an entire house and kill someone. Like, this is a very serious sort of, it's not an accusation, but it's just a portrayal of this brand. So they could have easily hidden the brand. They could have easily just, like, you know, you know the little crock pot covers where yeah. you just put a cover. I mean, they could have easily done that, but they didn't. Um, the brand was visible; it was right there for everyone to see. And this killed um, America's, you know, favorite character that's on right now. So this could seriously jeopardize sales, which I'm, I'm sure it already has. Um, if I wasn't such a crock pot lover myself, I might say, guess what? I don't want to get a crock pot. I have a toddler at home. I don't want to, you know, leave a gumbo or a soup. Well, I wouldn't do gumbo in a crock pot, but you know, I don't want to leave a soup in the crock pot. And then this happened. So you have to look at the decrease in sales. I can certainly sue for that. It's like lost wages kind of, you know, but like on a business perspective, you can certainly sue for that. And then the actual portrayal of that company in this negative light. I mean, this is a great case. So so the make, so the makers of This Is Us stated that in the episode, they referred to it as a slow cooker, not a crock pot. However, when it went to a close up of the slow cooker, it's, it had the brand crock pot on it. And that's, I mean, that's crock a pot problem. and slow cooker are like yes. synonymous with one another, yes. just like Coke and soda. Yes. Like, you know, um, so that's what they said, you know, that they did state it was a faulty, the, mm-hmm. the switch was faulty, um, and that they referred to it as a slow cooker in the episode and not specifically said crock pot. So that's what they said was there. So I think that um, if this is not some wonderfully cooked up um, publicity scheme oh, by the writers, yeah. I mean, just saying, I think it's it's wonderful because now, guess what? They're trending. We're talking about it. We're talking about the show. So somebody like me who's never seen the show, I'm going to go and watch it just so I can see that episode, you know? So if it's not some fabulous publicity stunt, um, the fact that they actually did use the label of the crock pot that should not have happened. And any person on their legal team would have known already, do not put the label on there. 
you literally just turn it around, don't have any sort of identifying factor um, unless this is some sort of product placement, which clearly is not because you wouldn't pay for your product to murder someone unless right. it was like a gun maybe. Um, so, no, it, it's not that. So I do believe that um, I know that they have a great case and um, – Hell, I'd love to see. see yes, I'd love so to see So we did happens. talk about, so in the article that I read, it did talk about defamation, but it also said that they had a case of disparagement. What is disparagement? I have no idea. Okay. Is that like a non-Louisiana thing? <laughs> it was, I don't know. I'll have to, I'll look up the article. Yes, it was something about it. product disparagement. Maybe I'm saying it wrong. Product disparagement? I don't know. It might be a non-Louisiana thing. You know, we're like different in Louisiana. It might be a non-Louisiana okay. thing. But if not... I'm going to look up the article. Listen, my professors, please do not be upset with me. Okay. I just had a, I had a baby. So I, you know, <laughs> I, I'm out of the loop for like three years. So don't, don't, don't judge me if I don't know this. Side note, <laughs> I was a little worried about... I mean, you always have that worry with a slow cooker. But like, that's one of the E's is that, you know, put it on while you're going to work right. and you can leave your home. And I know a lot of people that like don't leave it on when they're not at home because they're I leave mine scared on. at something. I'll leave mine on for 48 too. hours on low. Okay, well, I don't leave mine on for 48 hours. <laughs> but I, I I typically cook overnight or mm-hmm. I'll leave it on like while I go to work, but I also don't put We t- all don't put a towel right, underneath it. I don't put dish it. towels right. next to it. Right. And then if I'm done, I turn it off and unplug it. Right. So that was my whole issue. I was like, I think I this know, show. I was like, why didn't he unplug it? They're like setting up their own case kind of because they're like oh well we said in the show that it was a faulty or and then he put the dish towel and blah 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 but still you're showing the brand and the brand did this extreme level of destruction and that's not something that has been recorded by them or have you know it's been reported or anything so that's a big problem there like i believe that if they had not shown the actual crock pot label and zoomed up on that i think it would be um a little bit less of a problem but they showed the label so now it's fair game so the the next episode which is going to be airing directly after the super bowl next sunday um is going to be the house fire so wow i can't so wait. i will probably have to go see a therapist directly after <laughs> right the after. episode like i'm debating whether i even want to watch it because like the dad dies and the dog dies. skype your therapist during the episode yeah. so you can just like talk in the commercial they should have a therapist live tweeting live tweeting yes. during the episode yes. so if anyone needs needs somebody yes. i swear to god they have the show on just to make sure that you're a human being now i need to watch it because yeah. i have like no emotion i don't don't cry so i would love to watch oh it now God. i need to see what's gonna happen this show should be a <laughs> test like if you're human and then also the first 30 minutes of the movie the animated movie up yes uh, should is also that for me too that. like those are both like my like are you a human being right and does this make you mine cry? is milo and otis that oh, old old yeah. old i know i yeah Oh, man. That's a good one. Okay. <laughs> Speaking of the Super Bowl, Super Bowl is next Sunday. Uh, do you, I feel like you have a huge, do you do a big Super Bowl party? Okay. I feel absolutely terrible right now, but I don't like football. I don't understand football. I don't get it. But my husband's really into it. So I always do a huge Super Bowl party for him and my dad and my brother and all the men in my family. But all I do is ask them. I literally, I'm like, okay, what colors are you rooting for? And they'll be like, colors? What do you mean? So they'll tell me some random team. Like, oh, I'm rooting for the, I don't know, the the whatever, whatever. And I'm like, okay, I don't know their name. I don't care. What colors? And they're like, okay, red and white. Great. So now I know I'm going to integrate these colors into my entire meal and cocktails. We'll have a signature cocktail with the colors. I'll do the dry ice, everything. So all I care about is like, okay, what colors are we rooting for? And then I will prepare the entire meal around it. Other than that, don't care. See, I'm not a big football person either, but I am a food person. (laughs) So I appreciate a Super Bowl party. (laughs) So I like, what is like the one thing like when you think Super Bowl party, like what is the one food item that wings. you're like? Yes, that's what I was going to say right? too. Yes, wings. That's what I was going to say too. Is is wings? Yes. and also nachos. No. Oh, definitely loaded nachos. Definitely. So I was listening to the Bon Appetit food podcast today, and they were talking about Super Bowl things, and they were doing like chili versus gumbo, and for them, chili won. Chili definitely. Chili won. And I, I mean, because I feel like we can have gumbo anytime. Gumbo is anytime. Um, chili like. 
it's not the necessarily like go to kind of Cajun thing like gumbo. We do gumbo for everything. It could be the middle of the summer and we'll do a gumbo. Um, chili's definitely more Super Bowl and fries. Like I know I'm on a fries kick, but like literally french fries right now i think i'll do like a nice like loaded french fry kind of thing instead of nachos and dips i'm a big fan of a dip. yes like yes. chips and dip any kind of dip um that's all right with me certainly <laughs> yeah i'm like yeah i'm burger sliders like mini foods so dips and mini foods so like yes. pigs in a blanket uh stuffed mushrooms bacon stuffed mushrooms yeah. love that sliders sliders of any kind yes. pulled pork sliders so you, pulled pork versus burger sliders, I would choose a burger slider over a pulled pork. Oh, I am just a pork. I mean, I can't say W-H-O-R-E, but I'm a pulled pork that. Yeah. I, I like I like the pork too, yeah. but between pork and a burger, I'll oh. choose a burger. I could drink pulled pork. I love I mean, I'm just such a pork. <laughs> I am a pork person. I love it. Give me anything big and I'll eat it. And then do you have a, do you have a favorite kind of dip? I think my favorite dip, okay, I'm, I'm going to sound biased because I make it, but it's pizza dip. Okay. And um, so I make a pizza dip for all the tailgating games. And like, you know, I don't even watch the game. I just like, you know, drink and, and cook. But like all, um, it's a pizza dip. And so it is so amazing because it's basically an entire pizza, but with a lot of extra cheese and it's a lot of pepperoni. And then I don't, I, there's no crust because it's just a dip. So I do, um, I cut up French bread and do a little like olive oil, sea salt, pepper, bake it, make the little, um, like a crostini mm-hmm. and then you dip it. It is so amazing. That sounds delicious. So my pizza dip is like, that's my favorite dip. I'm a fan of a cheese dip. So any kind of cheese dip. Oh, I have three cheeses in the pizza dip. Nice. It's like three cheeses and like a, a couple delicious. pepperoni. You'll enjoy it. <laughs> All right, we're going to take another break, and when we come back, we have more with Imani. So come back to us. It is the Lafayette Food Junkie Show on News Talk 96.5. And now we talk about food. It's the Lafayette Food Junkie Show on News Talk 96.5 KPL. Welcome back to the Lafayette Food Junkie Show on News Talk 96.5 KPL. I'm your host, Tiffany Deku, and we've been talking with Amani Guillory Fruge, better known as the Cajun Mama. Uh, let's say one more time, like, where people can go to get more information on your products. Go immediately right now to CajunMamaLouisiana.com, or you can look me up on Facebook, Cajun Mama, M-A-M-A. <laughs> All right, so... I got to talk about Brodus Burgers because I went there this past week. They've changed locations. They've moved from the Moss Street location to an inside brick and mortar on Collie Saloon. How's the new location? It's good. I love how they have it decorated inside with like burger murals everywhere. Like I just, I kind of really like that. Um, And they were still doing their soft menu. So Mm -hmm. you couldn't get too crazy with your burger. So I got just like their regular patty, which is huge. Like it's very thick Certainly. and it's a juicy burger on ciabatta with Cajun mayo, grilled onions, mm. and I believe I got cheddar cheese on it. And it was it was a really good burger. And then I got it with chili cheese fries. And I love their chili cheese fries. Like they have like a huge basket of, of them. I you, have never tried their chili cheese yeah. fries. And they have the zesty fries. So it's like the battered Cajun battered fries. Yes, the best. Yeah, so they're Cajun battered, tons of chili. Chili's not, I mean, it's like Hormel chili, but I love Hormel chili. Really? And then it's like shredded cheddar cheese. Like it's not, it's nothing fancy. It's just like a basic chili cheese fry. Food. Right. Yes. And it's really, it's really good. Now, what I like about Brodus is that you can, I, I want to have him as a guest on the show. First you off, need to. Because he's super active on social media and like he's in the kitchen cooking. He came out. And went to everyone in the in the dining room and was like, hey, you know, hey, how's it going? And he was excited because he said, like, you know, he's he's indoors now as opposed to outdoors. Yes. And that's what he kind of wanted. But he did that. Then you'll see him on social media later on, like, a microphone, like, outside, like, trying to get customers into. So he has, like, a big personality. I, I really want to get him on the show. You could see his passion through his social media yeah. and through his work. I mean, my goodness, his, the burgers are amazing. So I, what I like about the burgers is that you can create the burger of your dreams. So they have, you can make a burger with cheese sticks, marinara sauce, mozzarella cheese. Mm-hmm. I mean, 
Yes, Whatever it's a pizza burger. Yes. You can make it happen. Anything you want. You want fried eggplant Do on it. your burger? You can make it happen. And it's all delicious no matter yeah. what you put. <laughs> so I, you, I'm, I'm, I take it you're familiar with the product. Oh, certainly. Yeah, are you, are you a fan? I am a huge fan of theirs. It took a while um, to actually get me there because it was on the other end of town right. in their old location. My issue with them. Yes, and I was like, oh, my goodness. So one day we were on our way to Eunice, where my grandmother lives, so we had to pass that way. It's like, you know what? We're going to go here because everyone talks about it. I had the best time. I built about four burgers um, just because I just love to eat. And I built four burgers and I tried all of them. Every single one was amazing. The service was great. I mean, it was absolutely delicious. So when I heard that they had a brick and mortar, I was so excited. I'm hoping that they get the milkshakes, too, that they had. I didn't try them. Yeah, they had milkshakes at the other location. Mm -hmm. They did not have them on the menu yet, but I'm hoping that they come to the menu. Yes. When they have, like, their full menu. Um, So we'll see. But, yeah, I need to get him on the show. Get him on the show and then invite me. I have him bring all the burgers and then invite <laughs> me and then I'll just come and like eat while y'all um while y'all are on the air. We'll just taste test all the burgers. But I do want to talk about the fries because I'm on this fry kick right now. I want to talk about the fries from the French press, okay? So one of my best friends works there. You guys ask for Courtney. Whenever you go to the French press, ask for Courtney and say that Cajun Mama sent you. So these cheddar ranch fries. Um, I've never put ranch on my fries before. What? Yeah, never. I haven't. Ranch goes on everything. I know. Ra- ranch literally goes on everything. I've never tried them on my fries. So do they have bacon on top? So they have the, they're already like crispy seasoned fries. And then they put the ranch and the cheddar and they put a little bit of bacon. But I always get extra bacon. I get extra everything. And just like put extra everything. Oh my goodness. Like I will, yeah. These fries are amazing. So... Of course, they're better than Taco Bell because, hell, they're local. You know, like, yeah. that's, that's, that's what we do here. But these fries are absolutely delicious. So whenever you go, get the Cheddar Ranch fries with extra bacon, a uh, little bit of extra cheese, and, I mean, they're perfect. I can't believe you've never had ranch with fries I've never before. had ranch with fries. There's this, there's this restaurant, and I do not know where it's located, but they, like, they're all about ranch. And you can get, like, a basket of fries with, like, all the different ranch dressings that they oh offer goodness. as a dip. Yeah, I told you, I'm a fan of a dip. So. Yes, <laughs> I love ranch. I've never had it on fries. Like, I will even dip my crawfish in ranch. Like, I oh, love ranch. So I good. Done that. So good. Ranch with a little Worcestershire and a little Tony Sashery's done. Okay. So good. Well, that's good to know. So good. And then you also ate at Rufino. Yes, I had Rufino's and as well. I, I think you said you're also going to Rufino's after the show yes. as well. So we're going to Rufino's again. Um, so, okay, I had brunch this morning. A couple of my girlfriends from law school. I haven't seen them in like a year. So we had brunch at Rufino's. Okay, boudin biscuit, hands down. Boudin biscuit. That's all I need to say. I'm not even going to say anything else. Just order that and thank me on Facebook later. Okay, so after Rufino's, we went to French Press, had a couple of um, mimosas. We had some of those amazing uh, cheddar ranch fries. Then we headed over to the beer garden. We had a little bit of uh, boutine, the boudin poutine, which is so amazing. And um, now we're going to Rufino's after because... Chef Candace, and be sure to tell Candace that Cajun Mama sent you. Chef Candace makes the best fried green tomatoes. I used to make the best fried green tomatoes in Cajun country, but now I have, you know, gone ahead and um, handed over my title to her because they are absolutely out of this world. Does she sell them as an appetizer or is it It's with a, a special. Dish? Oh, okay. It's a special. So it is basically, you can order them on their own, like, like an appetizer, Get the fried green tomatoes, and she does this, like, amazing aioli on top. I mean, she, she's a genius. It is phenomenal. And so for my little, like, toddler who's a picky eater to scarf down three of them, that's a big deal. Wow. Yeah, so I had to get two orders because I needed my own. Yeah, they're so amazing. They're better than mine, but I will. that's the only time I'll ever say anything's better than mine. So so what are some other places that you've been dining around town that you, you kind of love right now? Oh, my goodness. Okay, so I tried the new all-you-can-eat sushi. Wasabi. Right, wasabi. So at first I was skeptical because for some reason I just thought all you can eat men a buffet. Yeah, that's what everyone is yes. thinking. And, and so I, they were like, no, it's yes. like they make it to order. And but I didn't it's know that. And so like I, I hate buffets. I just despise buffets because I love to eat and it just makes me eat more. And it just makes me upset because I have to work out more. So I don't do buffets. 
But I was like, you know what? I'm going to try it. So we went, and it's uh, a la carte. You order. It was delicious. It was fresh. The service was amazing. They don't have their liquor license yet. So FYI, you know, yeah. just brace yourself. FYI, you can go next door to the Cajun table yeah. and pregame yes. and get drinks there. Exactly. Just, yes. Yeah. Get drinks at Cajun table first, then walk next door and do that. So that has been, um, you know, that was enlightening. Um, also, the half shell oyster. I ate there one time. I just got oysters there. It wasn't it wasn't bad. Like it, yeah. yeah. Um so I had half shell in Biloxi. Okay. And it was very good. So I wanted to try them here. It was good as well, but I would still go to our local Don's. I would still do I would prefer um doing Don's instead and or Drago's. Um let me see who else has something. Zia just started they are doing some new sort of like paninis where they do this, like, Cuban panini. They do this, like, grilled chicken panini. Zia is doing some new, like, experimental sandwiches that are out of this world. Um, And I actually tried plantains, believe it or not, plantains from Zia. Absolutely delicious. Were they... How were they done? Oh, my God. I don't know. Were they, like, chips or were they... Oh, no, no, no. Like, like not chips. The actual, like... Like, sautéed? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Like authentic. So was it like the sweet plantain? Yes, okay, sweet plantains, yeah. sauteed, like not chips at all. Very, and like that's something that I would expect from like Cafe Havana City, like something yeah. like that. Amazing. Okay. And I was shocked because it's like, you know, it's Zia. Um, when I think it was the monkey restaurant that was down. Sizzling the monkey. Sizzling monkey yes. had a dessert with fried plantain. Uh, and ice cream, and it was so good. They had some amazing cocktails there. Uh, yeah, they did. They, they did. did. Um, I they had like a few there. The few times that I went, mm-hmm. that I, I really liked. But yeah, that fried plantain dish was. I love plantains. Delicious. Anybody who has that, I'm I'm all about it. There's a taco truck down the street that has a dish that is basically like fried chicken plantain nachos. Oh my good, <laughs> you had me at fried. Yeah. So <laughs> and it and. I had to tell myself, like, it's not going to be, like, the fried chicken that you're imagining. I'm sure it's just, like, not breaded chicken dropped in the in the fryer. But then it has, like, the fried plantain chips with mm-hmm. it. And then it has, like, a sauce on top that I want to check out. Yeah, I want to I wanna check it out. Okay, call me. Just give me yeah. five minutes notice. I'll be there. <laughs> You'll be on it. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> All right, any other places around town that you've been checking out? Pamplona, my, like, end-all, be-all, no matter what, absolutely, bacon-wrapped dates, duck fat oh, fries, yeah. their escargot. So Pamplona and Charlie G's, for me, they're, like, hand-in-hand hand with escargot. It's kind of... It's kind of up in the air because it's something that I love. My child loves. My husband, like everybody, we all love it. But it, they're kind of like neck and neck for me. I Charlie G's just put out their new menu for their seasonal menu. And I really want to go and check it out. Like they had a lot of dishes on there that looked interesting to me. They had a lot of uh, call, pureed cauliflower. Chef Holly yeah. is beyond amazing. She's a creative genius. And like literally anything that she puts out, I'm there. I'm there. It looked so good. And I haven't been there in a while. And so they put out, I was like, man, I really want to get over there and check it out. Yes. Then, you know, they do their tapas and tasting. Um, yes. yes. Like once a month, um, next month will come, come right up. It's on a Wednesday once a month. And it's a great way to choose like um, you get a three course little tapas and then you get three different wines paired with it. And Chef Holly creates everything and they do the pairing. It's a great way to just kind of sample the whole atmosphere and just sample everything. We go every month and, um, oh my goodness, we have a great time. I've met some like really great friends there as well. It's like a really good social scene. I've met some solid friends there. Christina, I'm talking about you, darling. <laughs> and I, you also are writing for the Daily Advertiser. I am. Yeah, you have different recipes available yes. um, on a week. Are they weekly basis? Yes, yeah. weekly. So check out the Times of Acadiana every week. Um, go to KG Mama's page and I have a... Uh, Fantastic recipe for you guys that's inspired by God knows whatever happened in my week <laughs> at that time. But it's always delicious. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining tonight again as Thank guest you co-host. for having me. All right, that's our show. Thank you so much for tuning in. Join us next week, Sunday at 6 p.m. This is Tiffany Deku on News Talk 96.5 KPL. And this is the Lafayette Food Junkie Show. Thanks for listening. And as always, happy eating, Acadiana.